I hate, I'm not gonna keep that in. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and I know what you're thinking. Devin, really? Another movie review? Go outside, take a walk. How dare you say that to me? You know I tripped last week. There have been a ton of video ideas that have just kind of been bouncing around in my brain, and I've kind of started halfway on like four of them, but recently I found this movie that made me just halt production and focus completely on this. It's a Norwegian movie called Bold Eagles, and Holy shit, this movie has taken over my life. The reason for that isn't necessarily because it's the worst movie ever, like I've, I've seen worse movies, but it's because when I went to actually watch the movie, I quickly realized just how sorely I misjudged what the movie was actually about. With a name like Bold Eagles and a thumbnail like you see, you'd assume it'd be about an eagle, presumably this eagle, and his story of courage, how he finds his spirit of boldness, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Here, here's the movie's description. Keeping the eagle safe is a full-time job in Eagle Park, especially when they and many other animals suddenly go missing. The famous Eagle Park police must step in to investigate some campers and uncover the mystery. So, with a name like that, it's already kind of confusing why it's called Bold Eagles if it's about a police force, but don't worry, it's going to become less and less clear as the movie goes on. I don't want to spend too much time preempting the movie, because there's just so much to talk about, so why don't we just like hop right into it and you guys can tell me what you think. So in this opening scene, we meet our first two characters, these two police officers named Chief and Uncle Richard. Drive, Uncle Richard, drive. <gasps> I have no idea whose uncle he is, but he's Uncle Richard. Everyone calls him Uncle Richard. I think he's just the universal uncle. And they're just so stressed out about how late the princess is. Oh yeah, the princess. The princess of Norway. The princess of Norway that's coming to, to cut the ribbon on their national park, okay? So I don't know how ribbon cuttings work in other countries, but having the princess of your country come to cut the ribbon at your nature reserve kind of just feels like overkill. But Uncle Richard and Chief realize that they're missing someone. Chief, we have to wait for Radar. What? Radar isn't here? But he has the scissors. And this is an issue. For obvious reasons, you need scissors to cut a ribbon. So they frantically radio in for this radar guy to hustle up. Hello? Radar, where are you? They give him this super intense intro of him like driving out of the garage with all this rock and roll music and close-ups. And I'm over here thinking that this radar guy He's a badass. This radar guy, the, the worst ass. Holy shit, you guys, I was not ready. The, nothing could have prepared me. Answer me, radar. That's an order. Yes, sir. I'm on my way. Freshly washed and sparkling clean. There's so much to unpack. It's been two minutes. The most jarring thing about this for me is the fact that we've seen so many other vehicles already in the movie. So I was genuinely expecting just another police, police officer, officer to be driving, driving that, that car. car. But regardless, the ceremony's about to begin, so Radar has to make it there. And this scene of the ceremony just made me so much more confused as to why the princess is there in the first place. Our, Our dear, dear princess, princess, we, we have, have more than enough with migration, migration winter, winter storms, storms mosquitoes, mosquitoes, and, and empty seas. There's like, two families at the ceremony. And this woman is so clearly overworked. She's like mixing up speeches from yesterday and tomorrow. Uh, no sorry, that was yesterday's speech. I hope that this hospital will be. Oh, no, that's tomorrow. Like give this poor princess a rest. Does she have to, does she have to unveil every new thing in the country? You are clearly overworking this woman and pretty soon she's gonna lose her classic Northern Norwegian Southern charm. So Radar is speeding over there and almost doesn't make it cause this RV is just kind of swerving around in the middle of a lane for no reason. But he pulls out some moves and he makes it there in time. I am. Show off. <laughs> so the police force proceeds to give the princess a tour of their newly opened nature park, and it's just so jarring to me to watch like a literal car just driving through the nature reserve. Just like the most disruptive thing possible. Imagine hiking at like Yosemite, and just off in the distance in the shrubbery, you see just like a Volkswagen, you see like a VW Beetle just driving through the distance. Look out, ecosystem. There's a new beetle on top of the food chain, and I'm not one of the poop ones. Soon you can see the park's famous salmon run. Oh, how charming, with its own jumping fish. Why do they look so guilty when she asked that? Are these, are these someone else's fish? So to wrap up the tour, they lead the princess to the crown jewel of Eagle Park, 
Eagle Mountain. And way up on the top of the mountain, we can see the titular eagle just chilling there with her newborn. And the princess really connects with the eagle on the fact that she's about to be a mother because the princess has kids herself. She's going to be a mommy soon. Oh, you must promise to take extra good care of her. I too am also a mother. And this is where we find out the stakes of the movie. The park will be closed if you lose the eagle. Oh. No eagle, no eagle park. Does that seem a little harsh to anybody else? Like, what does that even mean? You're gonna shut down this whole park if they lose one bird? Also, what do you mean lose the bird? The bird lives here, you know what I mean? Like, the only way you're gonna lose the bird is if someone wants to steal the bird. I want that bird. So you guys remember the pesky old RV that was just kind of swerving around in the highway for no reason? That's not just a one-off gag. Those are the main villains of the movie. The RV was being driven by these two women, uh, Elizabeth and Elizabeth's mother. And they don't ever give her mom a name in the movie, so we can just call her Ursula. And this movie wastes no time establishing Ursula's motivations and her status as just the worst person, as just like the worst human. Elizabeth! <gasps> Animals are only ornaments. So many rare birds and animals just waiting to be caught, stuffed. But Elizabeth, unlike her mom, she doesn't want all this. She just wants a nice, normal vacation where she can relax and look at some birds or some ducks. Those are birds. But mom, you promised me a proper holiday this time. <laughs> Not with so many rare birds in- But obviously Ursula doesn't care about any of that. This isn't some vacation to her. This is a mission, and not just any mission, an undercover mission. <gasps> no, no, not the Norwegian flag. We're Germans now, Elizabeth. Germans, but why? So they can't recognize us. I have no idea how she's expecting this interaction to go. Hey, hey, what do you got? Hey, are you guys, are you guys breaking the law? Are you guys stealing animals over there? Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait, are you guys, you guys are German? Oh, no, yet yeah, that's a German flag right there on the side of your guys' RV. Ah. I was about to arrest you for breaking the law, but you guys are clearly two German women. So they begin kidnapping all these different animals, one of which is Otto the Otter. And I only mention him because his girlfriend Dottie is going to be a recurring just awful character later on. So while these villains are just kidnapping folks left and right, the police officers are doing their job, keeping the park safe. And this is, this is what that looks like. No, no! <laughs> Hey, not so fast. <laughs> he might have run over something, a squirrel or a cat, for instance. So now that Uncle Richard and Radar have cleaned up the streets a little bit, this is the perfect time, they decide, for a little on-the-job, heart-to-heart, a little man-to-car. Man um, hey, Uncle Richard? Yeah? Have you ever thought about becoming a father? Huh? You mean me having kids? Yeah, since you like kids so much. Radar... To have kids, I first need a girlfriend. Why is that? But this whole concept is just way too much for Uncle Richard. He's a busy man. He's everyone's uncle. Oh, Radar, there's enough to do in the police force. Keeping the peace, solving crime. Having four billion nephews and four billion nieces. I also have you as well. <laughs> but Uncle Richard changes his tune real quickly after tripping over this flower pot. You and... <laughs> <gasps> Oh, pardon me. <gasps> so the poachers narrowly escaped this encounter with Johnny Law by not really doing anything. Like, I need to emphasize, the German accents aren't doing anything for their disguise. They weren't doing anything illegal here. You here to hike? Hike? Oh, hike. Time to get back to business. We've got all the other animals that we came for. It's time to snag an eagle, ladies and gents. Ready? Rope, net, helmet, fish. And now it's time to catch the eagle. Rope, net, helmet, fish. And now it's time to catch the eagle. So these two women sneak up there, snag the eagle, and shit gets a little hectic up there. I cannot even lie to you. The eagle's egg ends up dropping off the side. They end up leaving a matchbox in the eagle's nest and also just leaving this big old orange rope dangling down the side of the mountain. So Radar notices the rope and realizes that something is afoot. That means people were up there. Ah, people. 
environmental criminals. And here's where Dottie kind of becomes like a main character in this movie. And I was just surprised at how much worse the movie could actually get. They've essentially added a Jar Jar Binks into this movie. And I hate it. I hate every moment of it. So Radar recruits Dottie to go up there and check it out because he can't because he's a car. He's a sentient car, you guys. And while she's up there, she finds the eagle's egg and the matchbox, the earliest clues in this caper. So Radar holds onto the egg for safekeeping while they continue to look for clues. And uh, this, uh, this scene of them, like, keeping the baby safe is just so weird to me. It almost feels the same as... Uh, eating an egg for breakfast? No, no, no. Are you mad? It's more like having a baby in my tummy. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I love how she gives like a normal response, like, oh, kind of like, like eating an egg for breakfast? That's the guess that I would have had. And Radar's like, no, you idiot. Uh, like eating an egg for, no. It feels like I'm pregnant with a little baby. It feels like I'm with child. D duh. Are you mad? So they go gather clues, chase after vehicles, and in the midst of all this craziness, in the midst of all this mystery solving, the egg hatches. And they just immediately mercilessly roast this newborn. Oh my God. A wet, scruffy, inedible furball? It's so scruffy. Only a mother could love a thing like that. So they ended up calling him Scruffy, which is just one of the insults that they came up with. And Scruffy imprints on Radar, the police car. Mom? What did you say? Mom? Mommy? I can be your mommy. Mommy. I, j I love this. This absolutely based family unit. This is a sentient police car as the mother figure, a female otter as the father figure, and they're raising a kidnapped baby eagle. This is, this is the future that the left wants. This is what Republicans think unit three of critical race theory is. If you haven't noticed, the concept of what makes a family has changed quite a bit in the 21st century. Remember how I said the addition of Dottie to the movie is like adding Jar Jar Binks? Scruffy, this little eagle baby is three Jar Jars in himself every time he opens his mouth. They go through this parenting montage of the baby eagle like laughing and crying and doing whatever this is, I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> and, oh my god, I don't think that there's a more annoying voice that exists. Oh, not a Let's play! I wanna play! <laughs> I want the poachers to get this eagle so bad. I, I want the poachers to get this eagle that has an incredible vocabulary for having only been alive for like hours. So the parenting montage ends with Scruffy eating a hot dog. He ate a sausage. He ate a sausage? And this is a momentous occasion because earlier they were just showing him different foods that birds normally eat and he, he was just so goddamn terrified. Delicious. Yum. Ah! So immediately cue the next montage of, I can't believe this is real, of Radar, the sentient police car, buying just an obscene amount of hot dogs at like the local hot dog drive through I, I don't even know what this park is. Never seen him pay for him, not once. I know he's not a criminal because he's a police car and police are the best. So the next day they wake up, this happy family, and they realize that Uncle Richard and Chief are on their way for a surprise checkup. We're only a couple of minutes away, over and out. Oh no. But rather than just explaining the situation that's going on, Radar and Dottie go through like these intense lengths to make sure that the police officers don't realize that anything's out of the ordinary. Like Dottie goes up there and grabs some feathers and pretends to be the baby eagle and Radar has to like keep his cool while this baby eagle just goes absolutely buck wild in the hood of his car. And this part was just so confusing to me because like Radar, you're not in trouble, dog. You didn't do anything wrong. You know what I mean? Just like tell them what happened and solve the mystery together. And I honestly don't even think Radar understands why he did what he just did. Cause the literal next scene is him calling Uncle Richard back and explaining the whole situation to him. What did you say? So the plan they land on is they figure they can't get in trouble if Scruffy's in that nest the next time the chief is over here. We're all going to be fired for this. No, 
Not if Scruffy learns how to fly and he's in the nest next time the chief comes. Cue the third montage of the movie where they make Scruffy just work out a ton. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Sausage King likes rock and roll. Sausage King likes rock and roll. And he gets absolutely jacked. I, Bro is cut. He's lean. But despite all of that, he's not making any progress towards learning to fly. Probably because his Mr. Miyagi is a sentient police car. I'm not over it. I will, I will never be. And Radar, realizing that he's never going to be able to teach this bird how to fly because because he doesn't know. Radar tells Scruffy that he's not actually his real mom. And this interaction goes like nobody thought it would go. I'm not your mommy. You are my real mommy. Yeah, uh, but Scruffy? You are my mommy. Yeah, well, but no. Scruffy gets so aggressive so quickly and Radar genuinely seems afraid of what this, this infant is capable of. I'm afraid. But Scruffy is pissed off. So to prove to Radar that he did in fact give birth to Scruffy, Scruffy's gonna jump off the nearest cliff and prove that he can fly. I'll show you that I can fly because you taught me. And by God, he did it. This man Scruffy takes off into the air and just soars across- oh, oh, oh wait, of course he doesn't because he doesn't know how and he falls directly into the net of one of the poachers. So they hightail it out of there. The German women realize their luck and they're just, they gotta make a break for it. But Radar engages in high speed pursuit for like a couple turns until they lose him in the bushes. So Radar retraces his steps and finds them hiding out in the bushes. Who's that? People who hide always have something to hide. Damn it all Radar if that ain't the truth. Come out! You're under arrest in the name of the law! Whoop! Radar! What are you doing here? W w what are you doing in the bushes with her? We're bird watching. <laughs> That's all. Bird watching. Yeah, yeah. So Radar explains that he literally just watched this woman kidnap the eagle. Chief, you must arrest her. She's stolen the baby eagle. What? But who's the police chief really gonna believe? His longtime partner of years? The sentient police car with no reason to lie? Or his new bird watching buddy? Well, to be honest, even he's not really sure, so he's gonna ask Uncle Richard. Richard! Yes, sir? You're here too? <laughs> Radar! But what are you doing in the bushes with her? <clears throat> Me? I'm, uh, bird watching. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Unhinged behavior from a kid's movie. Just in the forest? How dare you, first of all. Also, if you're gonna sleep with the law enforcement officers anyways, why are you pretending to be German? So Radar proceeds to speed run the process of having a falling out. He gets fired from his job and loses both of his friends because they just cannot fathom that two criminals would sleep with them. They're police officers. Criminals are allergic. Both of them are environmental criminals. <sighs> yeah, right. You are old fashioned and outdated. Radar. You are fired. Huh? Also, how are you gonna fire a police car? Is he gonna get another job now? The police radio is built into him. He's gonna know. He's gonna know where the crimes are. But Radar perseveres. This doesn't stop him in his dedication to this investigation. Because now it's not only an investigation to protect the park, Radar's gotta get his son back. I'm his mother. Oh, right. So we're getting to the end of the movie here. And thank you guys so much for bearing with me so far. And you will be rewarded for it, I promise. Because it gets so much more unhinged from this moment forward. So Radar finds the RV and calls Uncle Richard for backup, even though he's just been fired. Uncle Richard, can you hear me? Radar police car calling. Uncle Richard. But regardless, he calls him for backup because he can always do that. Like he's using his literal body to do so. So they can inspect the RV and catch the thieves red handed. But they're not going down so easy. We would like to inspect your camping home at once. Oh, nice! So they retreat back into the car, get ready to drive off. And this motor home has just been absolutely dusting this police car the whole movie. She's getting away. Drive, Radar, drive! I have no idea how you can be a literal sentient car. Like you are a car. Your life is you are, you are a car. Their motorhome is weighed down with one of every animal species in your park. It's like the goddamn ark and you're getting outrun. It's a, it's a motorhome. I, I, I need to chill out. I just, I just can't fathom a way 
that Radar is on the police force. But regardless of how embarrassed Radar should be by this fact, the RV is getting away. So Uncle Richard calls the chief for some backup. We are in pursuit and request assistance. Over. Understood. Which hardened criminals are you chasing? Over. But who's the chief really gonna believe? I refuse to hear any more false accusations about those ladies. So the chief has some time to really reflect, really look inwards, and come to the most logical conclusion about what could possibly be going on here. Of course, someone must have stolen the motorhome. We have some real hardened criminals at work here. So the police chief goes to set up a barricade as the high-speed chase continues, and he is absolutely floored to find out that this woman he just met betrayed him. You, my darling? Always be brave and true. Die if you must. Then life will treat you well, as will death. Like, holy shit, dude, no. You don't have to die. Why would you have to die? Why would you have to lay down your life? This man is kneeling down to protect the integrity of his police barricade. Radar, however, rams the RV out of the way at the last moment, saving the chief's life and flipping the RV like four times. And I was convinced that every animal inside died. That looked like a terrible car crash. Also, these poachers are freaking hardcore. They're like, so down with murdering and deceiving government officials. But nevertheless, they've been bested and Elizabeth just gives herself up to be arrested in the most overtly sexual way that I've ever seen in the kids cartoon. I hope you have handcuffs. But her mom on the other hand, Ursula? Ursula's not going out sad. Ain't no way in hell. She's gotta shoot all her bullets first. I'm innocent. Sh huh? She's she's the guilty one. Uh -huh. Her alone. Now take that. <laughs> Stop. Oh. Okay, well, way to blow your cover frickin' immediately. Why would you do that? Like, okay, ma'am, now you're getting arrested for that, and also, I don't believe you. So then, they find the mother eagle, sprawled out on the pavement, not moving. But I'll spare you the suspense, her talons do a dramatic twitch about a couple minutes later. That being said, Radar rolls up way too chill for having, in his mind, just killed Scruffy's real mother. But why isn't she moving? I don't know. Ugh, poor thing. You don't know? Radar, you don't, you don't know why she's not moving? Why don't we, why don't we rack our brains, Radar? Why don't we, why do you think she's not moving, Radar? But like I said, the bird wakes up and this is the interaction that I was personally waiting for all movie because I just had this sneaking suspicion that it would go like this and I'm so glad that it did. Who are you? Radar. Radar police car. I'm a friend of Scruffy. His real name is Albi. I love how the eagle's just like, Scruffy? Who the- Are you talking about Albi? Who the fuck is Scruffy? Like, picture what this eagle must be going through right now. This interaction is already weird enough without factoring in the fact that Radar is a sentient police car. I'm never gonna get over it. I fully thought it was gonna be just another dude. But now we got a few more minutes to wrap up the movie. We see Scruffy all grown up to show that time has passed. And there's really only like two more things worth mentioning. The first of which is it is now the official first item on my bucket list to recreate this scene from the movie. This is the coldest thing I've ever seen. Look how much drip Uncle Richard has just posted on the dock, the car, driven out onto the dock chilling next to him. The second of which is when Radar explains the moral of the movie. You know, being born must be the greatest miracle of all. Yes. Ignoring the clear and really random pro-life overtones to this message is just so goddamn bizarre to have Radar of all people or of all beings, I guess, come to this realization. Like even the way he phrases it, the way he says it must be, just raises the question, how exactly did Radar happen? Like, like was he built? But after Radar has his obligatory friends we made along the way moment, the movie fades to black. Being together with the ones you love the most is just as wonderful. And we're done. We never see the princess ever again. I think we called her bluff. This movie was an absolute blast to watch. I enjoyed every second of it. 
That's actually just not true. I don't know why I said that. If you have Amazon Prime, it's free to watch. So absolutely go do that. But I will be genuinely impressed. Genuinely impressed with anyone that can finish the movie. If it weren't for the fact that I knew I was gonna make a video about it, I would have turned the movie off about two minutes after that baby eagle hatched out of the egg. If that's even if I made it through Dottie and all of her antics. I cut most of that out in the video. Was it here? No. Here? No. Here? No. Here? No. Here? No. Here? No. Here? Here? No. 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 Also, just as a little tidbit, a little trivia fact, this movie was also released under the name Plotty the Police Car is on the case. And that would have just relieved all of my stress about why this movie is named Bold Eagles. But it also raises a new question. Why is this movie named Bold Eagles? There's already another name that exists that encapsulates the plot just better. What are you doing? What is, what is this studio doing? So in conclusion on the YBN Dev movie scale, that's right, it's a recurring thing. I give this movie a 78. A 78 out of what you ask? I'm never disclosing that information. Thank you guys so much for coming to watch another video. And at this point, if you're still here, we gotta have a discussion about what we are. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, you don't have to, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna be a jerk about it. But the Princess of Norway did actually say, if you don't sub to my channel, it's just gonna get closed down. No subscriber, no YouTube channel. Bye guys.